Comment on peut vous Alhamdulillah, il y a un peu de Alhamdulillah, il y a un peu de temps, il y a un peu de temps, il y a un peu de temps, il y وأكمل به الدين وأتم به النعمة وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم أما بعد All praise is due to Allah The only true God The cherisher, the sustainer, the planner, the preordainer of this universe and we would like here to testify that he is the only one worthy of being worshipped. We would like also to testify that Muhammad وسلم, is his last prophet and messenger. May all the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and all the prophets of Allah. Islam is a name for whichever revelation sent down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to any of his prophets and messengers. And Islam is the only religion even for all the prophets of Allah and the messengers of Allah beginning from Adam up to Muhammad. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon them all. <coughs> Islam in simple and very easy uh, uh, definition is the submission to Allah. To submit to Allah peacefully, willingly, wholeheartedly, sincerely, committedly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah is the only one who deserves to be submitted to, to be committed to, to be sincere to, to be faithful to, to believe in. And this is what we call Tawheed. Tawheed is not only to mention these sentences that say that you're supposed to be to worship Allah only, it's not that, only. It has a broader meaning. <clears throat> Tawheed means that's the first idea that may lead to your mind when you are in a problem is to think of a solution from Allah. That the first thing that may come to your mind or the first uh, uh, one to come to your mind to, to ask for help is only Allah. That you are not supposed to be afraid of anybody other than Allah. You are not supposed to take into consideration anything other than Allah. You are supposed to do your best, to exert your efforts, to have something to earn your living, but this does not mean that Allah is the giver, is the sustainer. Because without the help of Allah, you can get no results from your own efforts. And this is the broad meaning of being a slave servant to Allah. And this is the same for all the prophets, for all the people, for all the angels, for all the creatures around you. They are all glorifying Allah, praying for Allah, Submitting to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran that وَإِمِّنْ شَيْءٍ means that each and everything around you إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِ is glorifying Allah. Everything around you is glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْخَوْنَ تَسْبِحَانِ 
we, we don't understand the, the language of birds, we don't understand the language of animals. We've uh, uh, read about the, the miracle that the pebbles were glorifying Allah in the, in the hand of the Prophet We've heard of the trunk of the, of the, the palm tree that was moaning after being left by the Prophet We've read about the camel that was so furious and when the Prophet talked to it, it was very calm. All of these, and when he was coming back وسلم, from Tabuk, and he saw Ahud. Ahud is a mountain. And he said, this is Ahud. A mountain that loves us, and we love it. قال هذا أحد جبل يحبنا can, can the mountain love? Yes, it, it can. But it, it, can, it, will, it, will not, it will not express the way of love the way you can do, or the way you do. It's going to be something different. So, um, when we say that, you should direct your efforts, your acts of worship, your goals, your aspirations, everything that you like in your life, and dedicate it only to Allah, it does not mean that you're not going to do your best in, in following these things of our world of today. I report to my work for the sake of Allah. So whenever I'm going to do my, my work to the best of my abilities, I'm worshipping Allah to the best possible. I'm going to, do, to deal with people for the sake of Allah. So, if you, are, if you remember, if you are observing that all the time, that you are dealing with these people for the sake of Allah, I'm going to deal with them in the best possible way. I'm going to be good to my parents because Allah ordered me to be good to my parents. I'm going to treat my wife in a good way because Allah ordered me. And I'm doing it for the sake of Allah in this way. If I'm going to do it that way, your reward is going to be doubled. Multifolded. Because you are doing something you like, you are enjoying it. If you eat for the sake of Allah, you can eat for the sake of Allah. Do you know that? Yeah. I think it's Abu Huraira who said, Inni la ahtasibu ala Allahi nawmati. Abu Huraira, most probably, I'm not sure of the Sahabi who said so. He said, I'm asking Allah for reward for my sleep. I sleep so as to get stronger, so as to be able to pray regularly, so as to, earn my, so to be able to earn my living, so as to, be, to do my duties. So in this sleep, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for reward, even if I'm sleeping, enjoying my sleep, but I'm sleeping for the sake of Allah. If you're going to multifold your intention, the reward will be multifold. Allah has the ultimate generosity. And Allah is giving each and everything you ask for. You do something that's very tiny, Allah's reward is going to be so enormous. So why do not ask, try to think that way and dedicate each and everything for the sake of Allah. And if you are observing Allah, you will, it will be very difficult for you to do something haram. Because you are observing Allah. If you are watching Allah all the time, you will be shy to commit something wrong. We all commit mistakes. Nobody of us is infallible. Our Prophet said, all the descendants of Adam, all the offsprings of Adam, and this, this is no exception. Khatta. There's some kind of exaggeration. They commit lots of mistakes. The best of these wrongdoers, those who return to Allah quickly, those who make tawbah. Tawbah means coming back, returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, if you observe Allah all the time, this constitutes 
one of the main and most important aspects of Tawheed. Because Tawheed is not only that, La ilaha illallah, it's okay. And La ilaha illallah is the best words that you can say. And because of that, La ilaha illallah, you're going to go to Jannah if you say it from the bottom of your heart. But it's not enough to say it with, with your tongue. When our scholars defined Iman, they said, Nutqun bilisan. Something that you say with your tongue. Some, some kind of belief that is settled deep in your heart. وَعَمَلٌ بِالْأَرْكَانِ So, you believe, you say, لَا إِلَىٰ Allah. You believe firmly that no one else ever can do anything to you without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and are going to do your actions are supposed to be done, practiced, performed according to this kind of belief that you are uttering or pronouncing or saying as supposed to be saying together with practicing. You are going to say something and you put it into being. So it has to be in accordance together. This can prove that your belief is authentic. That you really is a monotheist. That you really believe that there is no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you are a slave servant of Allah. And you are, you are, you are here on this world to submit to Him so as to be rewarded later on when you meet Him one day. If you are going to stay here for a short period of time. If you are going to live even to 100, you are going to die. All of us are going to die. And we all believe that after we are going to be resurrected one day, we're going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so as to be accounted for each and every tiny word that you've done through this world over here. If these deeds, these works, are going to be dedicated to Allah, are going to be rewarded for them. And be awarded the best that you can never imagine. Something that is beyond your imagination. مَا لَا عَيْنٌ this is something you've never seen. وَلَا أُذْنٌ سَمِعَتْ I've never heard to, listened to. وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبُكَ Not even come to your own imagination. Something is beyond the imagination. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran, فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْيَرُ No one ever can know what is hidden for them over there. مِنْ قُرَّةَ from that kind of happiness that you're going to meet over there. Jaza'an bima kanu ya'an as a reward for whatever whatever they did in that world before in this dunya, the world of ours today. So whenever you do something now over here, it is supposed to be totally for the sake of Allah so as to be to give some kind of authentic tawheed, verified tawheed, true tawheed. If we're going to do that for the sake of Allah, our deeds are going to be accepted. Otherwise, it's not possible. Because the Prophet ﷺ told us that, in Allah, most probably, most certainly, Allah, do not accept any deed, except for those who are totally pure, totally genuine, all and in, in all is dedicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not a partner of any kind. Allah does not accept 99.99. The deed is supposed to be 100% or nothing. Be careful of that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all to dedicate all, all our good deeds to Him only subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Allah for forgiveness. Be sure that He's going to grant you whatever you ask Him for.
ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونتوب اليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له من يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه ومصطفاه ذلك المعلم الجليل صاحب الغرة والتحجيل المؤيد بجبريل والمذكور في التوراة والإنجيل صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم أما بعد We love for the sake of Allah and we hate for the sake of Allah and the Muslim is the brother of the Muslim the believer is the brother of the believer so I love Mr. So and so because he's a Muslim whether he is of my nationality, whether, whether he is one of my relatives or not, whether he is speaking the same language or not, whether he is from the same place or not, these are barriers that count for nothing in Islam. If you are living in the North Pole, I'm living in the South one, you are a brother of mine if you are a Muslim. This tie is Hablullah. This starts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I love him for the sake of Allah. Because the Muslim believes in Allah. And this is the most important thing ever that we are created for. Allah hasn't created us, but to worship him. So when we say that we are created to worship Allah, this is true, but it's, it's, this is not that precise. The accurate sentence is, we were not created, but, or except for this, the, the worship of Allah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّةِ Most certainly, I've not created jinn, وَالْإِنْسَةِ and humans, إِلَّا except for, but for, especially for. لِعَبْدُوا Allah did not say that I have created jinn and ins to worship me. The sentence is different. He said, I've not created those but to worship me. So you are dedicated, in fact, to worship Allah SWT. But to live and survive, you need to eat. If you need to eat, you need to work. So as to earn your living. If you're going, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he, he, he mentioned the, the creation of Adam, he said, Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. The word khalifa that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran means that a generation comes after generation. The continuation of life. Because khalifa means, yakhlufu ba'duhum ba'd. Some generation comes after another generation. So as for that life on this planet to continue. So I'm going to die one day. I'm supposed to keep that. So I'm going to marry. And I'm going to be given offspring. I'm supposed to, to take good care of my offspring, my children, so as to continue this Islam. I'm going to educate him according to the principles. So as to convey these principles. So when I die, my good deeds are continuing. The Prophet ﷺ told us so. If that human is going to come to, his demise, to meet his demise one day, all of us, in Qata'amanu, his deeds are going to be stopped. Illa min thalat. One of these three, a waladin, salihin, yad'ula. A kid, whether it is a male or a female, to pray for him, to supplicate for him. So I marry for the sake of Allah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bestow that blessing on me and give me a child, it's from Allah. I'm supposed to dedicate it to Allah also. To, so I'm going to educate him according to the principles, the teachings, the commandments of, the, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the teachings and instructions of his Prophet So as to guarantee that when I'm going to die one day, my good deeds are going to continue. So, <coughs> I eat for the sake of Allah. To earn that eating, that food, I'm supposed to work. So I'm working for the sake of Allah to earn my living. 
I'm going to marry. I'm going to choose a good lady of good morals, of good ethics, a good Muslim, so as to continue that, that good deed. And she's going to give, give birth to some good new generation and so on and so forth. So if you're going to have that idea clear and present over here, you're going to be living for the sake of Allah. And let me tell you something, you're going to enjoy your life. Because these tiny problems that are going to meet it's going to be trivial compared to that Jannah that you're going to meet over there, inshallah. And for this good, this good family, if the family is going to behave according to Islam, they're going to be enjoying their time. Every, each and everything, they're going to enjoy it. They're going to love your kid because he's a good Muslim. It's going to be a continuation of your good deeds. They're going to love all the people around you because Allah ordered you, as our Prophet ordered us, us so, to be good to our, our parents, even if they are not Muslims. One of the mothers of the believers told the Prophet Inna ummi qadimat alayya wa hiya raghiba. My mother is coming from Mecca after they transferred to Medina, immigrated over there, the Prophet and his wives, and her mother is coming to visit her, and she was still a Catholic. She was not a believer. She said, my mother's coming to visit me, but she's still, she's asking the permission of the Prophet ﷺ because this is the house of the Prophet and this is his wife. So she's not supposed to let in, even if this is a female, to his house except after his permission because he is the man of the family ﷺ. My mother came to visit me, but she's not a believer. Shall I receive her? He said, yes, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah told us in the Quran, when he is talking about the parents, qala, subhanahu wa wa in jahadaka ala an tushrika bi. That shirk to associate partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most atrocious crime that can be committed by anybody. Why? Because it is the only one that is not forgivable. Shirk can never be forgiven. Allah told us in the Quran, Inna Allah la yaghfiru yushrak bi. Allah will never forgive somebody who associates somebody else with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalik. Whatever, lower than that, it's up to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him or not. It's, it's not to us. So that lady is coming, and the Prophet ordered his, his wife to receive her. And Allah told us, in even they exerted their utmost efforts to convince you to associate the border with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَلَا Don't obey them. If your parents, who are not Muslims, are trying their best to convince you to associate the partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't obey them. But does that mean I'm going to take them as enemies? No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, huma fi dunya Be a good friend to them in that world. A good friend to somebody who is trying his best to make me a mushrik. Yes, because he's my father. And she's my mother. And I'm ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be good to them. So I'm good to him, not because he's, he's good personality, no. I'm good to my father because I'm ordered by Allah to be good to my father. I'm good to my mother, even if I, if I have some kind of different opinions, some kind of even of different creeds or beliefs. But I, I, I care for them for the sake of Allah. Because I'm ordered by Allah to be good to them in all cases. So when you, when you feel that, you know, deal with people in that way, <coughs> You are going to be rewarded and a multifolded reward. Your your reward is going to be multiplied many times by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala because you are doing this for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. I cannot pass here without praying to our brothers in Palestine. <coughs> we know that some of our brothers are suffering to the utmost, and. Whatever effort you can do for them, don't save this effort. 
so the least that we can do is to pray for them. Don't forget all the time when you sit for a meal, that's from to them, is the practice. For days, when you enjoy a good drink, you just see it. That some of your brothers does not have that chance. You are sleeping on your bed, warm in that one time. You just remember that some of them does not have a place to stay in. Pray for your heart. Ask Allah. This is as far as we can do. We cannot do more than that. If you can do something more, it's up to you. But don't forget that some of our brothers are suffering. And we should share even emotionally. Pray for them each and every salah. In each and every sujood of yours. Try to get a space of time for them. We are in a bad need of that supplication. That pray. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put an end to their suffering. Allahumma nsur ikhwanana fi Filistin. Allahumma nsur ikhwanana fi Filistin. Allahumma nsur ikhwanana fi Filistin. Allahumma saddid ramihum. Allahumma saddid ra'yahum. Allahumma alif bayna kulubihim. Allahumma amin khaifam. Allahumma atam jaya'ahum. Allahumma aksa'ariyahum. Allahumma awim sharradahum. Allahumma ahmil hafiyahum. Allahumma ashri maridahum. اللهم آسي جراحهم اللهم ارحم موتاهم اللهم عليك من آذاهم اللهم عليك من آذاهم اللهم ارد كيد اليهود إلى نحورهم ومن عاونهم ومن تواطع معهم اللهم عليك بأعداء الإسلام فإنهم لا يعجزون اللهم أننا لا أعلم يقينا يا رب أن لك حكمة في ذلك ونعلم أن أعداءك لا يعجزون اللهم عجل بزوال هذا الكرب يا رب اللهم عجل بزوالهم يا قوي يا عزيز اللهم يدا منك للباطل حاصدة تستأصل سرورهم وتقتلع جذورهم اللهم إنا نسألك لهذه الأمة أمرا أمر رشدا يعز فيه أهل طاعتك ويذل فيه أهل معصيتك وتقال فيه كلمة الحق لا يخشى قائلها في الله لوم تلاك اللهم رحمتك بالأطفال الضعفاء وبالنساء وبالعجائز الذين هم في حاجة إلى رحمتك وعفك يا رحيم يا غفور يا رب العالمين اللهم إنا نسألك أن تصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا وتصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا تصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا وتجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير وتجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر ربنا انصرنا ولا تنصر علينا وأعنا ولا تعن علينا واهدنا ويسر الهدى لنا اللهم إنا نسألك من الخير كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله واجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونسألك من فضلك العظيم ونسألك من فضلك العظيم ونسألك من فضلك العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين